Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 17 here on Stappenback. I'm just setting the hired help going with this one right here. There's a little tiny bit of grass available with it. Uh, we've got an awful lot of manure over there in this cow pen, so we're going to have to clean that out fairly soon. Um, if you have a look here in the cattle pens, we've got no grass. We've almost got no straw either, so we're pretty close. We're, we're up to the wire on this now. We're going to need to hurry up and get some stuff in here, which is not going to be a problem because we can load up a couple loads of power food as soon as we've done this straw harvest. And then we it, it's all going to be loaded up and everything's going to be absolutely wonderful and tickety-boo and amazing. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to have to do something with that pile of manure there um, so that we can get... Oh, that's the other thing I didn't do. I've got this trailer load of grain. I didn't actually tip it out at the end of the last episode. I meant to. I meant to come in here and tip it out, but I didn't actually get around to doing it. So if I just jump down here a second and open up that gate there then we can swing in round here and hopefully we can put the grain in and i love the way that the grain always does that in the trailers when you exit the game it does it to some modded trailers far more than it does it to the base game trailers the base game trailers tend to be a lot less dramatic than that but it's still highly highly amusing when it does it and it's I, I don't know there's something quite appealing about it especially when you start tipping or you alter it and it instantly changes it instantly softens it all out and it does the same when you're loading it with the combine as well it instantly switches it all out so anyway today we are doing the baling that's the first thing that we want to do is we're going to bale up all that straw over there then we're going to feed the cattle because they've got almost no food at all now. Um, the beef cattle, we still don't need to worry about them. We will be harvesting potatoes fairly soon, but I don't think they're ready yet. Uh, actually, they are ready. So as soon as we've done this over here and we've fed the cows, we're going to be harvesting those potatoes so that we can then get some food in for the beef cattle over that side. And then after that, we're going to be doing our muck spreading. I was going to do the muck spreading first, but I didn't realize the potatoes were actually ready. So we're going to be doing the potatoes next. After we've done this up here, done the baling, and we've cleared a field of straw, we're going to be doing those potatoes over there so that we can get the beef cows underway. I'd like to be able to do... I'd like to be able to be doing something with the beef cattle. So we just swing this one in round here, and I'm hoping that this Vicini trailer can just park up in here it's, it's a little bit of a struggle to actually get the thing to move and that was a mistake so we're gonna have to back the trailer out of here which I'm not entirely convinced that I can even do and then we can back the trailer into here and then I'll be able to unhitch it that's, that's a, that would be a good sort of uh, you know a step in the right direction I feel I feel that we'd be making progress if we were to okay um, this trailer is entirely too heavy for this tractor that's, that's the problem, is that this trailer is no good for this tractor. Let's try and... <laughs> right, we're just going to have to push the bales around. There's no help for it. Just going to have to push those bales around a little bit. Let's try and bring that back round. This trailer is ridiculously heavy, it really is. Um, so anyway, while I'm messing around with this, my weekly question... Um, well, it's now sort of become our monthly question, hasn't it? So, so sort of monthly question, fortnightly question, whatever you want to call it, our question. Where do you want me to go next? What map do you want me to go to next after we have done this current four-week stint here on Stappenbach? Do you want me to stay here on Stappenbach for another four weeks? Would you like me to move to the PGR Brusda map, which has just recently been updated? I have had a lot of um, requests for that map to at least include it as an option. So, re include it, I shall. There we go. Right, we we've sort... I'm thinking we get rid of this trailer. I'm thinking this trailer is just a little tiny bit too big for what we've got here. I mean, most of the time it seems all right. Okay, let's let's just put that one there. There we go, now we can go through to our next machine. This is the one that I want, but I don't want to be in cab. Right. Yeah, the, um, so, st stay here and stop them back. The PGR Brosden map, the brand new self-mounting creamery map, 
uh, Pacific Inlet logging and do logging followed by conversion over to arable or do you want to go to Lossberg? It's your vote, it's your game. Head into the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. Five maps to choose from. Which one do you want? Now, we just go through here like this and we're away. So we've got 190 bales worth of string on board. And I've had some people asking, um, you know, why I'm basically why why am I calling it string? It's surely it's twine. It's baler twine, and quite frankly, it can be either. Um, I know plenty of people that just call it string, and I know plenty of people who call it baler twine. It can be either. It's completely interchangeable. It makes no difference whatsoever which one you use. They both mean exactly the same thing. Um, I generally just call it string. Where I grew up, it was almost always referred to as string rather than twine. Um, there are some people who will actually say that twine is referring to the older version of um, what is used on bales. Um, the he well, no, it's, um, it's not Hessian. It's um, sizal. I think it's uh, sizal twine. Is it something like that? Um, it's a, an organic material rather than um, a manufactured material and I do know people who do state that um, that is twine whereas the new um, plastic stuff is actually um, that's just string it's not actually twine so there are a few people that do differentiate between the two by twine and string going on what they're made from but generally speaking there isn't any difference it's you, you can call it whatever you like um it, I mean, that's that's the sort of the thing for for most things you, you you can generally get away with calling most things whatever you want just so long as everybody else understands what you mean that there isn't any real heart real you know there's nothing wrong with calling it something slightly different than what other people call it We've got a full crop of grass out on this field now, so I'm not sure I should be driving over it, especially considering that the cows have got no grass at all. That's something that we're going to have to work on, and I may even go and do a little bit of that before we do the, um, the potato harvest. And I'm just wondering how we should do it, because I did have a go at using the crone mower and putting that sort of an all-in-one... Uh, single pass operation type thing but it does it seems a little bit overkill for the map um, it does seem just a little bit too excessive now I do like the idea of being able to do it all in one because if I go and use the mowers I've got to use multiple passes um, or I just have a front mounted mower and a rear mounted uh, forage wagon which does work it just takes a little bit longer to gather it all up so at the moment I'm not entirely sure which one I should be using to gather it up now um, if you were doing a zero grazing operation you would probably have a front mounted mower and a rear mounted forage wagon or more likely and this is used quite a lot especially in places like Ireland where zero mounted grazing is, uh, zero mounted uh, zero grazing is quite popular um, it's an all-in-one machine. It's got a mower on the front and it immediately picks it up. It's basically it's a forage wagon with a mower attached and the whole thing offsets off the side of the tractor and then you basically you head off across the field with this thing offset and uh, I know I'm leaving bits on the corners so just ignore that. Um, yeah, you head off across the field with this thing offset and it mows and gathers it all up in one single smooth operation but I've yet to find a mod that actually does this I did um, I mean to be fair it's been six months since I had a look but I did spend quite a long time actively searching around for one of those particular machines for a mod because I thought it'd be really cool to use in the game um, but I couldn't find one and I really hope that um, in uh, I, I don't have any hopes that in FS19 there's going to be one in the base game but I do hope that somebody is able to actually mod one because it would be very, very cool for some kind of zero grazing operation. I think it would go very well with a lot of the maps that are made. Not all of them, but some of them it would be very cool. If you just have this, it's an all-in-one machine, it works really well. 
and I know there's a lot of farmers that use this particular machine and you know feed their cattle with it almost exclusively uh, or at least through the summer when there's plenty of grass around and then they um, they go and mow it and bring it in and, and this is on zero grazing operations it is quite popular now zero grazing is exactly as it sounds the cows don't go out into the fields um, and there are reasons for doing it and in particular it's you know operations where it's difficult to move the cows around and or if you know your land is particularly spread out and so on there are, there are many reasons for not being able to move your cows out into the fields and so you use this kind of operation to do it instead and I would very much like to try and find something like that or um, find a mod well, find a mod that would actually do that but I don't believe there is any I mean if there is then let me know and I will go and check it out and we'll see if we can use it in this series um, but failing that we'll do what we've I'm thinking that probably that the best option is still going to be the um, mower on the front forage wagon on the back um, setup rather than using the big crone mower even though it does do everything all into one it just doesn't seem right it doesn't seem to fit anything that we've got here having that massive thing all going in together and besides which it's it doesn't actually work properly um, the um, the mower does actually clip into the forage wagon when you're driving it round, and quite frankly I don't really want to be doing that because this you know I know that I'm pushing the bounds of realism quite a lot with mo with you know a number of things that we do in this series uh, but that it's it just seemed a little bit too much for what we want well what we're trying to achieve here we're I'm happy to cut corners with you know we're going for realism and we, we do try to get realism, but I'm quite happy to cut corners on some of it in order to, like, speed things along. Like using auto-load trailers. I don't think that is such a break in realism that it's going to spoil anything that we're doing. Because all we're doing is just cutting out the bit where we manually put the bales onto the trailer. And we can, all, we, we can skip that bit because you still end up with the same final product and it's just speeding it up but where you've got a um, large self-propelled mower pulling a large forage wagon and it's like clipping right into it you're not just skipping out one little stage by doing one operation a bit quicker you're skipping a number of stages and it sort of and the way that you're doing it isn't in any way realistic either like with the auto load trailer we're still taking a trailer out to the field we're still loading the trailer it's just that we're loading a little bit faster and I know I know it's, it's kind of you know when when you talk about it it's like well you're cutting corners on that bit so what's what's the difference and there is it there is a bit of difference I, I think that there is actually a bit of difference so that's that's why I don't really want to um, do the whole thing with the, um, the the crone and the forage wagon we have at least looked at it but um, yeah it, it just doesn't seem to fit in my mind so we'll, we'll leave that now I'm gonna carry on doing some bailing here for a while we I'd like to get all of this done the question is going to be how many bales we get out of this field in total and where are we going to put all the straw I was thinking we'd put it in where we've got all the hay but I'm not sure we're gonna have enough room in that shed because there seems to be far more bales here than I thought there was going to be Straw harvest for, well, I was going to say 2018, but we've been here for, well, 
You know, it's difficult to tell what year we're on in this game because, you know, we, we've gone through so many seasons and so many years that we, we could be about 2050 by this point. But anyway, the straw harvest is now done. There we go. The last bit done there. And I'm going to pick up these three little dots of straw. I know there are a few other bits left behind, but uh, we won't worry about those. I have been told that I should update my straw add-on because there is an update for it. I'm not entirely certain what is involved with the update or what, what um, I haven't been able to find any patch notes so I, I don't really know what uh, the update actually comprises of and I've got to be honest I'm not all that worried about it. I've got, um, I was basically I was given a free copy of it and it was so I was given a code and a direct download link so before it came out they um, gave me and a few other YouTubers as well a free copy of the machine, uh, or the machine, a free copy of the pack, so that we could do an introductory video, you know, the whole marketing thing, um, which was absolutely wonderful. But I got a code and a direct download link, and I went and had a look about updating it. And you know, I don't want to go this way. I want to go this way. I'm gonna. I'm going to take the front weight and I'm going to leave this one down at the shop. We're done with this. I've hired these, so we need to get them back to the shop so that they stop costing us money. Um, yeah, so I've, I've been to the website and had a look, but I need to um, make an account and uh, sign up and everything in order to be able to run the update. And I'm not even sure what's happened to the code that I was given, which I will need for also doing the update. Um, so I'm not sure if it's entirely worth it. It still works. The pack works absolutely fine. I've got no problems with the pack whatsoever. So if anybody knows what the actual patch notes are, uh, I, would, I would love to know. I would love to know if there is actually anything in particular that I'm missing on this one or if it's not overly important. Because uh, I got the feeling that it's, it's not anything particularly big it's like that there are a few small updates for it uh, but it's, it's not going to make a vast amount of difference to what I do I'm just gonna leave that one there a second and we'll run back through here bounce and jump and we will return that one and then we will nope I'm gonna go further back uh, we will return oh I can return that one that's much better right we'll leave the minion weight over there then and we can return the big pack as well right that's all done do I have a trailer? That is the one thing. I'm not sure if I gave the trailer back or not. I know at least it. That one there we've bought. So I'll keep hold of that one. I got a feeling that the trailer that I had. I know that I've got this trailer here. We can use the 10 meter one. Uh, but I didn't really want to use that. We've got our milk tanker there. Right. I don't have a trailer. It would be a good idea if we did get one. So if I go into bale technology right here. I don't want to use the small trailer that I've got. I'd like to use the auto load there, the transport runner. That one is particularly good. It's a nice big trailer as well. Um, we'll get the trailer hitch on it as well. And we'll have wide tires because we're doing quite a lot of work in the field. So that's 18,300 euros. We will buy that one. And we back out of here and we want dollies. And now I have finally added this one in which is one that i should have had in the first place uh because so, this one here is great and all but it doesn't work very well it keeps like folding up and tipping over and so on and so forth and i was very disappointed to find that this double this tandem axle one wasn't included in the base game because it was included in the base game for the last version which seemed a little bit odd really not sure why they did that and we're gonna go for we're gonna go for that blue right there that kind of turquoisey bluey kind of color there just because we can there we go get that one and back out of there okay so we've now got that and it's subtle the, the the blue on there is subtle but it still looks good i like it we've got a lot of string left over a huge amount of string object too heavy i can't do anything with that we might just have to leave that there for a while so we've got a choice of using a sammy fortis a little one here or uh, well, we could use that one, but I, quite frankly, I don't think it's got the oomph to be able to pull it. So we'll leave that one there. Or we got this tractor here. We got rid of the saddle track. Decided to um, get rid of that one. There is now 
from what I just seen, um, the most recent um, mod updates, um, there is now a uh, one single attachment for the Zerian saddle track that is now on Mod Hub. Well, I think it's for the one that's on Mod Hub. I'm hoping it is. It does look like it is. It's a slurry tanker with a cultivator on the back. Um, it's absolutely brilliant if that's the case because it means that we've now got a piece of machinery that will go with the saddle track that you can get in the game. Um, at the moment, I'm not entirely sure though. And I've, I went and got the saddle track pack from Mod Hub. Um, not Mod Hub, from Mod Hoster, I think it was. And I've also included a link where you didn't have to use a, a dodgy download. Uh, well, well, you know, you know the dodgy downloaders. Um, I included links so you didn't have to use the dodgy downloaders either. Um, but yeah, it's good that there's one that's available in the game, so it should make it a bit easier for everybody to access. Now, hopefully, I can bring this one out around here. There we go, and we can go straight up to the field now, and we can grab a load of straw. Swing up this way. It should be. Hang on. Let's zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm doing here. Um, ish. I can ish see what I'm doing. There we go. No worries at all. Bring that one on round. Head on up here. So what are we on? We've got uh, z square bales. Right. So we've already got the right bales on here. So we just need to switch to work position. And then we can start going in around the field. And as always, this UAL trailer, the loading area is considerably smaller than the Joskin trailer. The green Joskin trailer has a much wider loading area, which is brilliant, it's absolutely awesome, but this trailer is bigger. You can put more bales on this trailer. So you, you sort of got, you know, there's the two there that you can use. This one has it on the, um, the, the quantity that you can put on the trailer, whereas the, the green Joskin one has it on the, um, <laughs> okay, I didn't actually mean to do that. Um, the green Joskin trailer has it on the number of, uh, on the distance that you've got to be from the bale, so you can. Um, it's a lot easier to load it with that one. Um, that being said, if you get the right angle on these, if you drive alongside them this direction instead of the other direction, uh, you shouldn't have any trouble loading them up if you're loading them straight from the field. What I generally do now, having started using this big pack and the the, the triple bale sledge is, well, at least for the time lapse, I've been, like, stacking them all up in the field like you would actually do. Um, it's quite a normal thing to go along and stack them up into a big stack in the field so that they can stay there for a few days without uh, coming to any harm. And then you bring the trailer in and you load the trailer there. And it's also, it, it is quite a, a, a normal thing to do for a farmer to stack all the bales up in one location in the field and then bring the trailer to there because you're not driving around the field with this great big trailer squashing down all of the um, all of the soil because the compaction is going to be a serious serious concern so if you're not compacting the field all the way around let's just put that and put the straps on there like that if you're not compacting the field all the way around just going up and down with this trailer getting heavier and heavier and heavier this is a really good thing and it's something that you would actually want to do now if you wouldn't necessarily be pulling a trailer like this across the field like I am now or if you were you would do it in one place you would just pick one point and that's where you would go continuously you just keep driving backwards and forwards on that one spot because then it would only compact that one bit and then you get a subsoiler a um, deep ripper I think you call it in some places in the world and you run through this subsoiler rip up all the ground really easily and you don't have any problems and that's that's kind of what you need to do in order to stop it from causing you any major issues now we have a bale that's in the way over there which is going to cause a bit of problem for my next plan which is to load this up oh no uh load this up like that there we go and i've got three bales of straw i've actually got several bales of straw on the trailer which aren't going to unload because i'm going to do this and I'm going to unload and then I've got four bales of straw still on here because it didn't work properly but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna leave those bales there and I'm gonna come on out like this and I'm gonna unload these bales out here and those will be the first ones that go into the mixed feeder 
which will make it easy. Or we could just put them in straight in for the cows. So, actually, I want to I bring them up to here. Let me just go to this point right here and load, and then stop loading, and then put to there and unload. Right, so we've got some four bales of straw out there, and we've got a few more back in the field. So if we run back up now, we get the next load, and we're not going to be far off of finishing this entire field, I think. It really is quite picky when it comes to how close you've got to be. I was, you can see from the wheel marks how close I was on there. What I don't like about this one is that the Zerian doesn't have much of a turning circle in regards to the actual hitch on the trailer, so it keeps pushing it out too far. And that's not actually very helpful because it keeps flicking it round in a very weird fashion. I'm going to drive up along these. I actually missed all the other ones. I didn't think that I would. I didn't think that I would miss that three over there. See how it's sort of forcing the back of the dolly out round when I'm turning? It's not very realistic, that. Still, at least at least it's it's loading up. That's, that's one important thing. It's not loading there unless I do that. I need two more, which will be these two going over. It'll be the one right over there that's right into the hedge. And this one right here. And then I reckon we got one more load after this. We'll have a look. We'll turn around in a second. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got ten. Yeah, 30 bales. So we got ten things on here. There we go. There's all of those. Ten stacks. Have we got ten stacks left in the field? Uh, three over here, four, five. And then one, two, three, four. We're one bale shy of three complete loads in here. Let me just unload this one onto the trailer like that and put straps back on. There we go. Now you can see the wheels spinning a little bit. I think we might end up changing this tractor at the beginning of next week. Comments in the comments section. Would you like me to change a tractor? I'm ruling out right now that large vent. I don't want to use that one anymore. It's too noisy and I don't particularly like the feel of that tractor. Um, the actual fent itself is fine, but it's noisy. I don't like the way you jump into the cab. Um, so I'd prefer to have something a bit different. I'll go to the next size down, the fent 900. I'm happy to go to that one if that's what people want. Um, or, you know, I can stick with this um, class Zerian. I know we're in Germany, so when in Rome, you're supposed to do what the Romans do. And we're in Germany, so we're supposed to do what the Germans do. And one of the things that Germans do is use class machinery. So I'm quite happy to use the class machinery. Now, if I load this up again, it's grabbed an entire line of straw from under there. It was not part of my master plan. Let us uh, unload. We'll put that one over to there. Unload onto there, and... Oh, that's just great. Now I've got bales going everywhere. I'm going to struggle to get the next load of bales in the shed at all. And I'm also going to struggle to be able to reach the hay in there for the other things that we need to do. This is not going quite according to plan. I think we'll, for the final load, we'll leave them on the trailer for a bit. Because, I mean, we don't need to unload them immediately. And it's going to be dry for a day or two. So, so long as it's, it's only grass that you can, um, it damages it if you leave it out overnight. Um, hay and straw is only if it gets rained on. As long as it doesn't get rained on, we'll be fine. Okay, so we'll switch that one off there, and then I press B to select the side, which is like that. And then I press Y to unload, like that, and we're away. Right. One more load, which is going to be one bale shy of a complete load. And then we are done with gathering all of the straw. So the next thing we need to do is feed these cows. We also need to get grass in for them. We have to do some grass. So I'm thinking that uh, we'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep this tractor for now. So we'll go with the front mounted mower and we'll go for a smaller forage wagon. Um, the, we could use the Sammy tractor that we've got back at the, um, the dealership. However, uh, I don't think that one's going to be quite powerful enough to run the front mounted mower and a forage wagon on the back. Even if we go for a very small Pottinger forage wagon, it's still not going to be enough. Um, we don't need anything bigger than a very small um, Pottinger forage wagon because you're not going to be getting that much grass all in one go. Um, the cows aren't going to need 
very, uh, you know, masses and masses and masses of the stuff. They just need some. And you can even put grass in for them through the winter anyway. You can put, I think you can put grass in for them at the beginning of winter and then it um, stays there and gets used up until it's all gone. And it, they only put hay out. So you, you, you do end up saving yourself. And I'm pretty sure, but, I mean, I used to do it on nine days and you can only put three days worth in. And I did Dowlin Farm series on nine days and I haven't done any with um, the, not with the sheep. I haven't done any with the, the, um, the time lapse series I'm on at the moment with cows. So I'm not really sure how it's going to work. It's going to be quite interesting to find that one out. Right, so there we go. We've got one bale shy of a complete load on this one. Um, so as we go through the winter, I think if you go on the last day of autumn and you load the cows right up with fresh grass, it will still last for three days. So most of the winter that way, they will have fresh grass. Uh, if you, Because we're only doing three days a season. The more days per season, I did nine days a season on the Dowlin Farm one. So the beginning of winter, I think I had grass in for them. But then as the year went on, um, you, you didn't have any grass at all. Now... It was what I was going to do here. I think what we can do, I think we can actually go in and we can unload this. Uh, because I've got the hay at this end of the shed. And then the straw is going to be at the other end of the shed. So all we need to be able to do is get through the shed. Which I can't actually do. Because those bales are in the way. And I don't think I can actually get through these bales here. Because they're right under the wheels. And now they're jammed in the doorway. Nothing is ever easy, is it? Nothing is ever easy. All I want to be able to do is just, like, push through. Just, just push through. You'd think I can. You'd think that would be something I could do. I need this tractor, and the tractor's now stuck with the trailer. Oh, no, there we go. Right. If I can do that, that means I can drive on forwards like this. Get to that point. I should be able to load up one of those bales. I can actually load one of them up, I think. Right, so I'll unload that and then I'll press X to load up there we go I've actually grabbed some of the other bales which I didn't want to grab so um, that's that's not quite so good and then we'll do that and I think it's loading unloading behind me is gonna chuck them into the floor but we'll soon find out so we press uh, L uh, no Y to unload there he did chuck them into the floor but it didn't do too badly okay so we've left some bales out there I got one bale down there uh, but overall we haven't done too bad there. I'll go, I'll go to that point right there and this dolly is not very good, is it? I'm wondering if it's the dolly or if it's the tractor or what. It, it, it could be either. It really could. At this point, I'm thinking it could literally be either one and I've got no real way of knowing. We'll go to there and we will unhitch that one. I've got... I've got that baler there. That baler has been sat there just, just looking at me and... I'm not sure if we should be doing something with it. It's here. It had grass in it. It no longer has grass in it. And we used the big pack, didn't we? So, do I keep the baler or do I sell the baler? This is a tough call. I'm going to leave the baler there for now, but we've got it. We can sell it if we want to. It's definitely better using the big pack if we can, because it's much faster up across the field. And leaving the bales in threes does make it easy to go and pick the bales up. So, you know, there is a strong argument in favour of having the big pack over that baler right there. But, I mean, we own that baler now. And we're only going to lose money if we go to sell it. So we may as well keep it until we actually desperately need the money. Because we may not. We may, we may end up not needing that money. We want to go uh, mowers this time. Well, we want loading wagons, and we could go for a small Pottinger. I'm actually going to go for a Bergman. Slight step up. Ooh. But we could go for a Fent. That's 36,000. That's 42. That's 34. Okay, we're going for a Fent. Lely. Didn't we have a Fent before? Pretty sure we've already used the Fent. I mean, that one's 72,000. This one's 4,000 in it. This one down here is 31,000. That's a lot cheaper. 
I think we go with this one. This this one's considerably cheaper, and we don't need masses and masses of grass, do we? There's, we're not after tons and tons of the stuff. We just want enough to keep the cows ticking over. So let's go from you into the mowers. We've got that front-mounted Novacat there. That is 3.1 meters wide. We've got that one there, the Laylee Splendimo. That one is 3.2 meters wide. And we've got the Coon there. That one is 3.5 meters wide. It's actually wider. Uh, we're going to go for that one then. 3.5 meters. We'll take a piece of that. Thank you very much. Excellent. Right. So I need to get that one onto the front. And then we can get the Pottinger on the back. We can race up to the field. And we should be able to get just a teensy tiny little bit of grass. So that we can bring it down and put it in for the cows. Right. It turns a lot sharper, this one does, than a dolly. i got a feeling that it's the, two, the, um, the tandem axle dolly that is causing us a bit of problems and maybe the turning circle on it isn't quite as tight as it should be. Anyway, we don't need to worry about that. My weekly question for this week is what map do we go to for our next four week stint? Do you want to stay here on Staffenbach for another four weeks? Would you prefer to go to uh, PGR Brusda, uh, recently updated? Would you like to go to... hang on. I was hoping you remember them all. South Mountain Creamery, a new map has just come out. Pacific Inlet Logging, which is probably the best logging map there is. It's been designed specifically, or it's been redesigned, completely redesigned, specifically with um, the ability to cut the trees down and make your own fields in mind. The whole thing was now, but it wasn't originally, but it is now set up so that you can do that. Um, so specific inlet logging or there is Lossberg. I get so many requests for that map. I have included it once again because it does seem to be very popular. That is a map that is suited to small machinery. It's absolutely a small machinery map, the, um, the Lossberg map. Uh, but anyway, it's your vote. It's your game. Head into the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. That is all we've got time for today, so we will be back tomorrow. We will carry on cutting a little bit of grass up here, get that in for the cows. We then need to feed the cows properly and put some straw in for them. We're not going to muck them out yet. We will be doing that a little bit later on down the line because as soon as we've given them enough food to keep them going, we are moving over to the potatoes and we're going to harvest those so that we can get our beef cattle doing something at the moment they're sat there like lemons and they're not doing anything whatsoever it would be good if we could get something out of our beef cattle so that will, that's our our next project once we've got the cows here fed we're going to try and get the beef cows fed so that they'll start breeding and producing small beef cows which would be a wonderful thing so if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.